Hi guys, welcome back to the channel again. So the last week I shared with you in the community and on Twitter a photo of my desktop environment, of my desktop, in which actually I customized a little bit more my GNOME desktop environment. As I said already before, I will move to a VM this year, but I don't know yet exactly when. Anyway, many of you asked me about how I customized actually the GNOME desktop environment and what you saw in the photo, so I thought I'd do a small video about it. It's fun and it might be useful for some of you. So without further ado, let's jump into the terminal. Hey everyone, welcome back again here to the desktop. So many of you asked me about a customization that I showed you on the community a few days ago, how I customized actually my GNOME desktop environment. I'm still in the project of moving to a VM, but I'm not ready yet. So I just customized the GNOME desktop environment a little bit further and many of you were interested to know how I did. So I thought I'd do a small video about it so that you can see how actually it's done. Now, this is a plain install of Arch. It's a base install and I just installed the default GNOME desktop environment. The only thing which I actually did extra here in this installation is that I went on and I installed the GNOME terminal transparency from the AUR. I know there are many other terminals that you can use like Terminator, Termite and some others, but I wanted to use the GNOME terminal here and I went ahead and I downloaded the transparency version because the one that comes with Arch is not transparent by default. So that's what I did first and then I actually adjusted one settings because for some reason once I downloaded the transparency terminal I was wasn't able anymore to hide the title bar and that has to do I found out with something in the configuration for the terminal so if you are encountering the same problem and you don't know how to get rid of the big thick title bar on the GNOME terminal you just have to open up the dconf utility which should come pre-installed in Arch and you will just go here to the org GNOME and then scroll down to terminal and then legacy and then you will have to go into the head bar and provide here the false value. Though by default, this is gonna have nothing. So you will have to turn this off and then select from here false. And then once you do that, you will have to click apply, restart the GNOME shell, and then you will have the choice basically to have this option back here, if you go under general, to show the menu bar by default the new terminals. Now, once this is deselected, you will see the title bar is slightly thinner and that will be coming in handy when we are going to install the pop shell so that's just a small note before i begin here so what i did first then i began actually to install the gnome terminal transparency so i will leave a link to all the packages i am installing here in the video description below so don't worry about remembering all of this okay so let's close the terminal and the next step i did actually was to open up the browser whatever browser and you just go to the gnome extensions website here and I need to switch here the language and click the first link. And you're going to be asked to install the browser extension here, which I'm going to do on Firefox. It's going to be probably the same with other browsers. And OK. And then you just reload the page here. And as you can see here, there is a package missing. Although GNOME shell integration extension is running, it's missing the host, which is the Chrome shell extension package. So we need to install that. And let me open up again the terminal. Let me actually minimize here the Firefox window. And we are needing to install here sudo pacman s chrome gnome shell and hit enter. Enter the sudo password and install the package. There you go. Now, while I'm at it, actually, I open up the gnome tweaks here. And I'm going to open up here the title bar buttons. And I want to have the new window centered. There you go. So let's go back to Firefox and reload again the page. And now we can use the extensions. So the one I need here is the user themes extension. So I'm just going to click this and turn the switch on. And basically that's it. So we can close Firefox and close the tabs here and pull up again the tweaks tool. And now if we go under appearance, we can see we have the shell available. Of course, we don't have any theme installed, but we need to have this available. Otherwise, we will not be able to change the GNOME shell look and feel. So let's close this up and let's go ahead and open up again our terminal. Now I'm going to go full screen this time and increase the font size. 
And now we are going to install all the packages we need for the customization. So all these packages are in the AUR. So you have several choices here. You can use Paru, you can use Yay. You can also, of course, use the git clone command to just clone the repositories. In this system, Paru is installed. So I'm just going to use that to install all of these packages. But as I said, you can use also Yay or any other helper if you like. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's type in Paru dash S. So the first package I want to install is the GNOME shell extension pop shell. Now there are two packages for the pop shell. One is the Git, the development version. And now we have also a stable version, which as in the recent weeks reached version one. That's why there is a new version here without the Git, without the development version. And then we are going to install the flat remix and also the flat remix GTK, which is including also the icons. And I'm going to install also the flat remix GNOME. So these are the main three components that we need. I'm going to install actually also the Brave browser because I want to try this out again. So I'm going to install the bin version, the binary version. Otherwise, it takes too long to compile. And then I can just hit enter. So it's resolving dependencies here. Now for the repository, I'm going to choose the number one and we need to check these files here. So let's proceed to review and there's nothing I need to change anyway. So I'm just going to hit Q here and proceed with the installation, enter the sudo password and proceed with installing the dependencies first and then it's going to build the packages. So this is going to take some time, of course, depending also on your computer, how fast your CPU is. So it's break time for me, guys, and I'll be back with you when it's done. So there you go. The packages are now installed. So let's clean up the terminal. Well, like we can actually close it for now and let's begin our customization. So let's open up the tweaks tool and I'm going to go under appearance. And as you can see here, we have now the full range of flat remix colors. So the one actually I chose for me when I showed you that on the picture was actually GTK blue dark solid. So that's the one I chose. Of course, you can choose any other that you like. Under icons, I actually went for Remix Blue Dark. And for the shell, I went with the Blue Dark panel. And as you can see, this is how it looks like. Now you can see it better because it's quite a bright background, but I'm going to change the background anyway soon. And that's all there is to it right here. So the pop shell is also installed, but in order to activate this, I need to once reload the shell. So let's hit Alt F2 and type in R and hit enter to restart the shell. There you go. And now if we open up again the tweaks tool here and we go under extensions, you can see we have the pop shell available so we can activate this and it appears up here on the right corner. We have some options here that I want to activate. The one actually I want to activate is the smart gaps. So I'm just going to activate this one and close the tweaks tool. Okay, now the next touch would be actually to install the wallpaper, what I showed you there on the picture. I will leave the link to the wallpaper in the video description below. And right now I still didn't upload it anywhere, so I will have to pull it down from my server. So I will use SSH for that. So let's open up the terminal and uh, let's go also full screen here and increase the font size. And I'm going to type in, in here and I'm going to use SFTP to do that. So I'm going to type in SFTP and then hermano, and then my IP server is 192.168.178.184, and hit enter. Need to accept here the fingerprints and enter the password, and there you go. So my local directory here with LPWD, it's the home directory, and my remote working directory is also the home directory. So in my server, I need to move actually to my downloads folder, I believe. So I'll type in CD and then downloads and pwd i can see i'm there so i'm just going to list the file and i can see i have my space jpg photo in there so to pull this down here to my home directory i'm gonna pull i'm gonna type in get and then space jpg and there you go i can exit now and close the terminal now let me pull up here the file manager you can see by the way also the new icons here and if I go here to my home, you can see I have the space JPG. I'm just going to put this under my pictures. I could have done that before. And then right click here, change background and add a picture and select the photo there and click open. 
and select the photo and now we have the wallpaper there you go that looks better let me adjust here one thing so i'm gonna open up the gnome settings very quickly and i'm gonna go here with the keyboard shortcuts because the pop shell here is gonna actually have some shortcuts that i need to change so let me click the plus here and the name is gonna be terminal and the command is gonna be gnome terminal and let's say I want to do the shortcut here, for example, mod enter or Windows key enter. You can see this is already in use by the adjustment mode. So we'll need to change that if we want to use this shortcut. So let me cancel this and search for adjustment mode. There you go. I'm going to select another shortcut for this. I'm going to select in this case mod B and click set. And now let's create my terminal shortcut here. So I'm going to call it terminal. The command is gnome-terminal and the shortcut is mod enter. There you go. And click add. Now let's pull up the terminal here with mod enter and let's turn on the tiling windows here in the pop shell. So this is how it looks like. So let's pull up a few more terminals here by hitting mod enter again. There you go. And if you don't like the title bars, of course, you can go under the pop shell here and deselect show windows titles so you will have a clean terminal now the only thing i did extra here on my desktop was actually to install the oh my bash framework to change themes and plugins but i'm not going to do this i will leave the link to it in the video description below so that you can see how it's done it's basically just needing to install that from the repository and activate it and then you can choose the theme you want on your shell but basically this is what i wanted to show you here how i customized the gnome desktop environment on my main machine so before i wrap this up i want to show you actually another thing quickly just to be aware of so let me turn off your tiling windows for now and close these windows so when we stole now the flat remix theme there are a couple of things that happened and let me show you what i mean so if i log out from the desktop environment here you will see also the GDM display manager also changed the background. So there is a way to change this and I'm going to show you that in a second. Now make sure also that when you have these options available here, you go on to flat remix and not flat remix on Wayland. Otherwise the pop shell is not working with title bars on Wayland. So you might want to choose Xorg anyway, and then login in back in to the desktop environment so that also your lock screen is going to work flawlessly. So let me check first if the settings are still valid for the lock screen because sometimes it overlaps with the pop shell. So you can see here in the GNOME shell, it says the lock screen is already assigned to Super L. But if we do this, you can see there is no key binding here. And if I hit mod L, it's telling me that this is already used by the pop shell for focusing windows to the right. So I need to select here another shortcut. So let me do mod X. That looks good. So click set. And now if we hit mode X, we have our lock screen here also working. Now, the last thing I want to show you was because of the GDM display manager. I'm just going to open up here Brave. That should be installed. There you go. And I'm going to go here to flat remix. And I made a typo there. Doesn't matter. You can correct this. I'm just going to go to the website and scroll down here. So this is actually something to be careful because if you want to actually also change the login theme, so that means the background, for example, of the GDM display manager, what you need to do, you need to actually clone the repository. So let me actually do this. First, we need to make sure that ImageMagick and the glib2 are installed, which should actually be installed already by default if I open up the terminal here and i type in sudo pacman s and then glib2 and image magic and enter my sudo passwords yes you can see they are both already installed so i don't need to do this so what i need to do now is to actually copy i will just copy here this command and paste it into the terminal and hit enter here and it's going to take a second to do that there you go. Now we need to move into the repository. So CD and then flat remix GNOME. And then what we can do here, let's minimize this window. I'm going to open up the settings 
and I'm going to go here to the background. Now, I'm going to select the background one more time, and I go back to the terminal, and I'm going to type in, in here, make, and sudo make install, and hit enter. So it's going to take a second to do this. It's applying the settings also to the display manager. There you go. So if I close the terminal now and I close this window and I log out, we're going to see also the background here on the display manager. There you go. So we can hit enter here to enter our password. And we are back in the desktop environment. And if I hit mod X, we have also the wallpaper on the lock screen. So there you go. So you'll need to repeat this every time if you want to change the login picture. So you'll open up the terminal, go into the flat remix directory, select your wallpaper, and then do the make command. So that's basically how I customize the GNOME desktop environment when I showed you the photo on the community and on Twitter. If you have any question about it, let me know in the comments below, and I will try as usual to answer you as soon as I can. So there you go, guys. This is a very simple way on how I customize the desktop environment. So if you have any question or you try it out, let me know in the comments below. As usual, I will try to answer you as soon as I can. And I hope also you liked the video, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and sub to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always help me out. And if you want to support my work, you can do so by visiting the Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through my website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.